Hi friends, I'm Father Kerry Walters, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. This one, a reflection on what we mean when we use the expression body of Christ. Body of Christ is indeed an expression that's familiar to all Christians. Many of us think of the body of Christ when we think of Eucharist, that is the breaking and consecrating of bread uh, as the high point of a service in the liturgical tradition. Those of us who are independent or Roman Catholics, Anglicans and Episcopalians, uh, Lutherans and Orthodox are well familiar with using the expression in the context of the Eucharist. All Christians, liturgical or otherwise, are also familiar with the expression from the letters of Paul. Uh, he calls the church universal the body of Christ. It's sometimes referred to as the mystical body of Christ. That somehow Christ is present within the church, the church as a whole, not this church or that church, not this denomination or that denomination, just as surely as for the liturgical traditions, Christ is present in the Eucharist. But having said that, what do we mean? We all know that there's been a centuries-old wrangling over exactly what the body of Christ in Eucharist means. Is it explained by transubstantiation, by consubstantiation, by some third stantiation? Um, and we have a vague idea, perhaps, of what it means to say that the church is the body of Christ. But can we come to a closer understanding of the body of Christ in both of these two events in the uh, life of the church and also in a wider context? Well, I think we can. And so in order to give you some indication of what I mean, I'm going to draw on a theologian, a philosopher, and a beautiful, beautiful poet. The theologian first is a Lutheran theologian, Robert Jensen, who just passed away last month. Uh, in many of his writings, particularly in his magisterial systematic theology, he refers to the body of Christ as an availability event. Now, it's sometimes very difficult to figure out what Jensen means, not only when he talks about the body of Christ as an availability event, but when he talks about anything. But in his final book, uh, which is really a collection of lectures that he gave in the last years of his life, I think he's just about as clear as he ever was uh, in referring to the body of Christ as availability. So let me just read, if I may, a short snippet from this book. It's called, the book is called, A Theology in Outline, Can These Bones Live? And this is what Jensen has to say. The existential reality of a body is its availability. My body is simply me insofar as I'm available to you, insofar as you can get at me, you can see me, you can touch me. If you get close, you can catch my cold. The body of the risen Christ, then, is fundamentally whatever it is by which he is available to us. So when we say in the Christian church that the bread on the table of the Lord's Supper is the body of Christ, we do not mean that it's a chunk of an organism. We mean that it's something available and that this is where the risen Christ is encountered, as Christ himself said when he instantiated the Eucharist at the Last Supper. Now, what Jensen seems to be implying here is that whatever a body is, whether it's physical or spiritual, an essential function of a body is to be available to others is to be a point of contact, if you will. So what we need to do then is to dive a little more deeply into the notion of availability. And that's when we can call upon the philosopher. Uh, the French philosopher, Marcel Gabriel, he's a 20th century thinker. He's sometimes called an existentialist, although he himself didn't particularly like the label. Uh, he preferred to think of himself as a Christian philosopher. Marcel talked a great deal about availability. Uh, the French th word that he used is disponibilité. Uh, it's a easy enough concept to grasp, but it's an extremely difficult word to translate. Uh, the standard translation of disponibilité is availability. Marcel himself suggested that an English word that might better fit what he has in mind is handiness. But basically what Marcel means by availability is this. When we make ourselves available, we open ourselves to others and we open ourselves to experience itself. 
we allow ourselves to become vulner vulnerable enough to uh, feel the pain and the suffering of others, but also the joy and the satisfaction that others experience. We open ourselves to the misery of the world while at the same time opening ourselves to the truth and the beauty and the goodness of a God-created world. To be available then is to be focused, to be alert, to be attentive, and to be open, as Christ was open on the cross with his arms outstretched. So now, put these two thinkers together in thinking about the body of Christ. Jensen tells us that the body of Christ is, any, is present whenever Christ makes Christ's self available to us. Marcel says that availability or disponibilité is always somehow in the service of others. We empathize with them in order to help them, in order to share their journey with them, in order to offer them comfort if need be, or to celebrate with them if need be. So I think what we can gather from this then is that the body of Christ is certainly present in the Eucharist and is certainly present in the wider mystical church, but is also present whenever we can sense the availability, the openness, the being thereness, if I can put it that way, of the Lord. We can sense the body of Christ on a beautiful spring day walking through freshly plowed fields. We can sense the body of Christ uh, looking in the face of a lonely and frightened child. We can come across the availability or the body of Christ uh, in any kind of situation that we allow ourselves to be sensitive to, uh, to any kind of situation in which we look beneath the surface, as it were, to discern the underlying presence. The body of Christ, then, is in at least potentially any place that we wander into, any event that we encounter, any face of the other that we meet, if we only can open ourselves to it. There's a wonderful passage in the Gospel of Mark in which a deaf and blind man asks to be healed by Jesus, and Jesus whispers to him, Ephatha, be opened. It seems to me that that's a necessary condition for truly appreciating the universality of the body of Christ. And now to the poet, the Victorian Jesuit poet, Jared Manley Hopkins. His poetry is simply exquisite. In just a few words, he manages to capture, it seems to me, some of the deepest insights of the Christian tradition. And in this particular poem, uh, I think he really does uh, capture what uh, Jensen and Marcel both mean by availability and the body of Christ. This is what uh, Hopkins writes. He says, I say more. The just man justices, keeps grace. That keeps all his goings graces. Acts in God's eye, what in God's eye he is. Christ. For Christ plays in ten thousand places. Lovely in limb and lovely in eyes, not his. Christ plays in ten thousand places. The body of Christ is discernible in ten thousand places a hundred thousand, a hundred million, a billion places. There is no part of reality in which the body of Christ cannot be discerned by those of us who have eyes that see and ears that hear. And so, my friends, when we think of the body of Christ, it's again perfectly appropriate to think of it in Eucharistic terms and in ecclesial terms, but let's not limit ourselves to discerning the body of Christ to those two events. Let's open ourselves to the wonder of reality. Let's one open ourselves to the wonder that Christ is present. Christ's body is present to us wherever we may go. I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.